Let's face it, this winter has been fierce. It's not just the unrelenting cold and snow, but some days the wind is so strong it nearly lifts you off your feet. In certain spots around the city, the wind is intensified by the surroundings, creating a wind tunnel effect. One of those places is just outside this studio on Guest Street in Boston. The wind kicked up this afternoon, making the walk from our parking garage to the front door seem like an Arctic trek. Since my colleagues and I are so often wind-whipped on our way to work, we got to wondering why are some places so much windier than others? So we sent out our Curiosity Desk reporter, Edgar Herwick, to find out. Anyone living in Boston in the 1970s will remember the great John Hancock Tower wind disaster. On the night of January 20th, 1973, 65 huge panels of glass blew out of the soon-to-open building, smashing onto the streets below. The panes kept falling into the 1980s until eventually all 10,000-plus windows were replaced with a different kind of glass. But the wind issue still plagues the folks who walk the streets below, and I wanted to know why. So I headed down to the base of the skyscraper with structural engineer Patrick McCafferty, who tells me that the building is basically an 800-foot glass and steel windsock. What will happen is it'll hit up high, yeah. and the upper third of that wind will find its way up and over the building and everybody's fine. Okay. But the lower two-thirds will actually wash down that broad face and swoop down underneath here, and we will feel a significant downdraft. Significant because of the height of the building. Wind is going to travel at a much higher velocity the higher up you go. And you can think of this as a great big wind catcher. One way to keep that wind from rushing all the way down to the street is to build what McCafferty calls a podium. So when you say a podium, a podium I mean, is like to a non to a non-architect. A podium, you know, a podium is, is like I'm going to stand here and give a lecture. At it's this not podium. it's not one of those podiums. Here I am at the podium. <laughs> a podium. When we say podium, it's basic. It's the base of the building, like a shelf. Okay. It's like a shelf. This shelf on one side of the Hancock helps break up the downdrafts and protects people at the base. But height isn't the only thing that creates a wind tunnel effect. So can the proximity of one building to another. Think of it this way. There's a certain volume of wind that has to get through a, a, a piece of real estate over a certain amount of time. And if the area of the gap that the wind is passing through gets narrower, it has to speed up. And Boston has its fair share of tightly packed neighborhoods. Take the corner of Summer and Atlantic near South Station. There are a couple different very interesting wind patterns I heard can occur right here at this corner. Like when the wind comes from the north and the west, as it does most days. It'll come hit the broad face of this building. Yep. Do that downward sweep that we were talking about. Yep. And actually do a curl and hit that building across over there. And do a downward sweep <laughs> north towards the greenway. <laughs> So it literally can do a curly cue up and around and over like that. Yeah. Then there's the issue of open spaces, like Boston Common. Wind loves an open field, and it'll get a nice head of steam as it moves through the park, speeding up until... The first bluff object that it sees, these perimeter buildings, that's where it will start to dump. And so if you're standing on a particularly windy day with the wind coming in from the west, you will, again, just like we talked about the Hancock Tower, you can start to feel downdrafts that occur along the sidewalk. Architects, engineers, and city planners have gotten pretty good at understanding what any given building will do to the wind pattern on the streets, but they can only control it so much. And at the end of the day, Boston is just plain windy. The wind speed in Boston, is the three-second gust, is actually greater than the wind speed in the, quote, windy city in Chicago. And that's not just hot air, folks. That is science. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, Emily, in reporting this story, it turned out to be way more complex than I yeah. really thought it was going to be. Uh, maybe that's my own naivete. I thought it would be a fairly simple answer, but it, it's a complex issue. Yeah, I thought it was more like the aerodynamics of the way the buildings were built. But I mean, Boston, I can understand. It's, we're near water. We've got this varying level of buildings, but is there another reason? The water is a huge reason. So East Coast cities like Boston, because they're so close to the water, and Boston's particularly close to the water, see, wind wants to travel faster over water. The water, the, the, the ground level of the water is very smooth, so the wind is able to speed up. So anytime you're near water, you're going to get all kinds of wind speed, and then it hits a very tightly packed city. What's interesting, a couple of things that I learned is that the direction of the wind has a big, uh, has a big impact. So when it comes from the north and the west, which is our predominant sort of area, that's where it's bad at, say, 
say, near the Hancock Tower. But the wind in Boston can come from anywhere. It can come from the south, it can come from the east, it can come from the west. And depending on which direction the wind's coming from, different areas of the city are going to be affected on different days. Okay, so are architects and city planners supposed to take this into consideration when they're building? Absolutely. Not only are they supposed to, uh, they, they have to. The Boston Redevelopment Association, who I talked to as I was uh, looking into this piece, they explained that in the, it was like the 1990s, 96, they adopted what is Article 80 of their coding. And that makes any large project, so projects of over 50,000 square feet or buildings that are 150 feet or higher, they have to test what the conditions mm -hmm. are going to be like, not just for the building to avoid something like happened with the Hancock Tower in the 70s, but also to test what's going to be happening on the ground level. What are the wind speeds going to be like on the ground level? They now, have how, to how test How do they know? It. How do they test until the building's been built? So get this. <laughs> they go into... A wind tunnel, of oh, course, an actual yeah. wind tunnel. So what they'll do is they will build a scale model of not just the building, but also sort of a certain surrounding area. So a couple of the other buildings, too. And they'll go into one of these big scientific wind tunnels, and they'll have a jet engine on one end, mm. and they'll shoot air at it, and they'll turn the building mm. and measure when the wind's coming from any given direction, what's going to happen to the ground below. They also have some computer modeling that they can do. And so uh, when I talk to you know, structural engineers, architects, what they say is they love to be able to be involved in that process and look at those results. And you can sculpt a building or shape it or position it. You can build these canopies or you can have these shelves, these podiums, and really kind of mitigate some of those effects down on the ground level. Okay, well, were, let me ask you this. Did they forget to do that? Or did WGBH get a pass because we're public television and people felt sorry for us? Because that is one of the worst wind tunnels I've ever, ever experienced it is, in my life. It is quite it's bad actually there. Olympian. Well, I asked Patrick when we were walking around the city when we got back here, I said, let's talk about this area right here. Because you and I have talked about it a lot, right? It pushes you right back. It gets back. so windy here. So uh, it's a lot like what is happening down on Boston Common, yeah. which is that um, there's this big open space. So uh, if you look at it on a map, we have a map right here, you can see there's all this open space. There's the river. So the, the wind's traveling really fast on that river. river. It's traveling fast down the highway. And you see that big open parking lot right there? Yeah. It picks up speed right through that open space. And then that bridge, it hits it flush against that bridge. Oh, our and bridge. Goes, That's our GBH bridge. That's our GBH bridge right there. So what this tells you when you look at this, and that's north, the top of the screen there yeah, is no, north. The city didn't want us to build that bridge, you know. Well, we this, the city, we yes. Because it's a community, so we needed to be on both sides of the street. Very, very <laughs> true, very true. So when the wind is coming from the north, that's, that's going to be the days that we feel the real effect there. Now, one of the things that uh, some of the engineers that I talked to said is with all the building that New Balance is doing, yeah. that should actually help mitigate this. Because right now, we're the only kind of tall building in the area, and just like at the John Hanson, Hancock Tower, when you have one building that's much taller than everything yep. else around it, that can create a problem. When we have a couple more buildings that are sharing some of those high winds, mm -hmm. they should be knocking some of it off, and it should actually help a little it's bit. We'll see. because I don't notice it all in the Back Bay proper where I live, but the minute I start walking to the north end with all the varying and then the, the yeah. open space, it's just a completely different... You know, one of the other things is, is that makes this so hard is that cities are changing. Mm. So uh, what Patrick was telling me when we were out near the Greenway is think about the Greenway. When the, when the wind's coming from the south, mm. it picks up speed along the Greenway. Now, he says, think about a few years ago, that was an elevated highway. And that was actually a pretty good thing because it was sweeping all the exhaust away from the highway. But now that there's not a highway there now, now that they want to create a nice pedestrian park, the fact that wind will whip through there makes it a challenge now. Especially since there's so much cement on the Greenway. That's true. <laughs> All right. Edgar Hoek, thanks for enlightening Thank us. Thank you, Emily. Right.